introduction. Thank you very much for that. Really, I'm just Christine. I'm from CHEO. I'm a researcher at CHEO. And actually, most of my work focuses on the younger age groups. I'm interested in the very young ones. But I do have an interest in adolescents, and some of my research uh, does, uh, does look at inner, uh, adolescents. Keep in mind that um, I'm an obesity researcher, so some of this is going to be from the obesity perspective. But just keep in mind that we're talking about chronic disease prevention as a whole, because healthy active living isn't only for obesity. Healthy active living is just for health in general. So you might want to know what physical activity is. A lot of people associate physical activity with sport. Sport is a type of physical activity, but physical activity is not sport. So physical activity is defined as a complex set of movements, so anything essentially that uses your skeletal muscles. So all your big muscle groups, anything that, that you might be doing, running, walking, jogging, gardening, dancing, uh, climbing stairs, doing laundry, all of these are forms of physical activity, and they just have different levels of intensity. So a sport, for instance, might be of a higher level, is a higher level of physical activity, but physical activity encompasses any bodily movement, really. So really, why do we want to be physical, physically active? Because we know that physical inactivity is associated with uh, obesity, metabolic uh, disorders, and cardiovascular disease in youth. So really, a whole conglomerate of chronic diseases. So the more inactive you are, the greater risk it is that you could have a condition down the line. So you want to get people active so that they can prevent this. So your children, you want them to be as active as possible for their own health. Uh, promotion of good health. Okay, so we know that physical activity levels track over time. So if you're physically active as a child, that means you'll generally carry that behavior into adulthood. But if you're not active as a child, it's very difficult. And as adults, you might recognize this, it's very difficult to change your behavior. So when you become an adult, asking an adult to suddenly change and become a physically active person, if they haven't developed that set of behaviors or that skill set, it's quite challenging. So this is why we want to encourage activity as young as possible. So what are some of the barriers? I'm sure that many of you who have teenage children are quite aware of the barriers and I would call distractions, some of them. So this is what is called the physical activity transition. So over time, our lifestyles have changed. We all recognize that our lifestyles have changed. We used to commute everywhere we go. We used to walk everywhere. We used to, uh, we used to do behaviors and all of our chores were much more active. The sports were very different, less organized more involvement, more outdoors, and our free time was spent differently. Our free time perhaps used to be uh, in social pursuits. It might have been in active games. Now, as we all know, a lot of the free time that children have is spent with their fingers. Texting, computer time, Facebook, Twitter, you name it, uh, all of these sorts of things. So our, our time has changed. The way children see uh, play and behavior and interaction has changed as well. This, so this cartoon of course, younger than the teenage kids, but I'm sure this applies to a lot of teenagers as well. Mommy, can Michael and Lindsay come in our house to play? All right. So they've got all these toys sitting there that they can play and possibly be more active with, and what are they doing? They're sitting in front of the TV. So a little physical activity in the early years predicts downstream health problems. Uh, this is based on some of my other research. Sedentary preschoolers are likely to become obese in childhood. Of course, that's a little different than, uh, than adolescents, but... One of the solutions that a lot of people say is, oh, well, let's use active games. You can buy all of these video games that, you, that will encourage you to be active. You can buy the Wii, you can buy the Kinect, you can buy all of these things. And some schools are thinking that they're going to incorporate these in their phys ed programs because they think this is where kids are going. Um, do I think that this is a solution? No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I tested it in my lab. I used something called a game bike. So this is an example of something you can buy for... $1,300 or something ridiculous like that. It interfaces with a PlayStation 2 and interfaces with a television. So as you pedal, you play your game, and the faster you pedal, the faster your character moves in the, in the imaginary world or the virtual world. So we thought, according to the, the uh, proponents of this sort of extra exercise game, that if children are really going to use this and if this is going to be an effective way to encourage physical activity, then those that are participating in this should be more active, should uh, burn more calories, should be active for a longer period of time. So what we did is we compared two groups. We compared a, a group that used only the game bike and a group that came in and exercised uh, listening to music so they could bring in their iPod or we would choose a radio station for them. So 
our hypothesis was that those kids that would be in the extra gaming, exercise gaming system would exercise longer, that they would burn more calories, that they would increase their fitness, that they would reduce their body weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we actually found, no differences between groups, and oftentimes the kids that were listening to music exercised longer. So, you know, what we thought going in and what we thought kids wanted and what the companies are sort of touting is not actually true, at least in this case. So, what I'm telling you now is for your teenager, don't let them convince you to buy a very expensive exercise gaming system because it is not going to get them more active than playing outside, for instance. So, no need to waste your money. That is point number one. <laughs> So uh, another issue is what we call nature deficit disorder. So most kids, particularly teenagers too, because of, of all of these social media and things that they're involved in, they spend a lot of time indoors. So there's something that's called nature deficit disorder that was, uh, that was coined by a researcher in, in uh, California. So basically it's saying that children these days, they don't know how to play outside. They are ill-equipped to, uh, to play games outside. They're ill-equipped to entertain themselves outside because they're used to being inside and they're used to uh, being entertained by sedentary pursuits or things like sitting around doing uh, low, ac low active activities. So again, showing that our, our lifestyle has changed and the barriers that there are involved in getting kids active. For instance, this isn't a playground, this isn't a Canadian playground. So you would think that at a park and a playground, this is a place where we should be encouraging people to be active. We should be encouraging kids to be active, to run around, to run, to jump, to hop. Instead, this is telling them, keep your hands and feet to yourself, walk, don't run, no pushing or shoving, and think before you act. Although I understand that these are safety rules and regulations, I think that we're getting a little bit, we're, we're a little ahead of ourselves and we're policing our children too much. So you have to let children go out and rough and tumble and have fun and play as long as, you know, they're, not, they're doing it um, with respect for the people that they're playing around. But we shouldn't be limiting the things that they're doing. Another example, and uh, if you live in Ottawa, you're probably familiar with this, the banning of street hockey. So another way that our environment and our culture is really um, attending or dampening the opportunities that kids have to be active. So if you want to say to your children, well, you should go and play street hockey, why don't you go up and get a group of your friends? Well, in some neighborhoods, no, you can't. You can get a fine, a $500 fine, if your kids are outside on the, on the street playing hockey. So just an example of um, so, sort of what society in general is doing because they think it's a safety issue, but they're really, really limiting the opportunities that our kids have to play and be active. Even they can not play soccer in front of the house. Right, and you know, there's a very fan of soccer. He cannot play, and he can complain. And isn't that pathetic? It is like, really. That's really sad. This is this is what childhood so is for. So we're playing soccer for one thousand dollars, which is I don't know. Oh, that, you see, and that's unfortunate too, that we're, we're forcing our kids to then play an organized sport, and organized sport and play all sorts of money. And there is, there is no literature to suggest that any children who play organized sport get more physical activity than those that choose to just play with their friends outside. Well, the fact it's is, more fun. it's more fun if you're playing with your friends. And think about it this way, and this is something that I often say, okay, you're going to sign your child up for soccer or hockey or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they pay $1,000 to play a sport, and they sit on the bench for a third of the game. Yep. Because there's only 11 people that can play on the field in soccer, there's yep. only six people that can play hockey. So every third shift in hockey, you know, you're on the ice. You're on the ice for 40 seconds, then you're off the ice. And in soccer, so you so might be on for 15 minutes and then you're pulled off and somebody else takes the place. Only they all play. Exactly. When it comes to game, no. And that's unfortunate, you know. So if, if your child was out playing soccer with his friends, he could play the whole time. And you know he would he would get it, be getting more physical activity. So although I am not saying that we should discourage children from playing sports, I'm saying that it's not the, the only solution. I don't have a TV in the house. You are way ahead of the rest of the, <laughs> the world, and that is that is fantastic.